for the automation solution architects. So let me quickly share my screen. So today we are going to discuss about challenges and lessons learned as part of the automation solutions architect role. Now, a brief introduction about myself. So uh, I'm working as a solution architect in UiPath since the last two years. And I have overall nine years of experience uh, and uh, four years of experience in UiPath technology. Uh, I have helped clients in designing automation solutions for over 25 plus automations uh, across multiple domains, finance, healthcare, media, manufacturing, etc. So that's a brief introduction about myself. I would like to quickly jump on today's agenda. Uh, but before jumping into today's agenda, I would like to give you a quick recap about what all sessions we had and what all the topics that we had covered. Like we had briefly talked about in our previous session, roles and responsibilities of solution architect. And also we had talked about the best practices as part of the solution architect role. And uh, today we are going to discuss about the different challenges as part of the automation life cycle that uh, automation solution architect faces, right? Uh, we are also going to discuss some of the common challenges and how we can address them. Uh, finally, we are going to discuss about lessons learned and some quick guidelines. And then we will be jumping into a quiz session and finally a Q&A round. Now, uh, first of all, uh, to un understand the challenges of automation solution, uh, the first automation uh, life cycle stage is the requirement gathering stage, where the automation solution architect needs to uh, work hand in hand with the business analyst to understand the complexity of the business process. Now, what we mean by complexity of the business process is uh, the business process can involve multiple applications involving multiple input files coming from different input sources, like input files can come from email, input files can come from bank statements, or it can be a simple CSV file stored in kind of some kind of network drive. So you have to understand each of those components, how those components interact with each other. And uh, yeah, and you also have to perform some kind of feasibility analysis in order to understand the complexity of the business process. And a basic guidelines involves, you have to break the process into different, different smaller sub processes and your solution should be scalable enough and also have to take into account the different parameters which might change into feature and keep it configurable as much as possible. And the next major point or the challenge of automation solution architect is lack of documentation from the business side. So automation solution architect majorly have to rely on the interviews or the process walkthrough recordings in order to gain a deep, deeper understanding of the business process. And the third challenge that we are going to talk about is the changing business requirements. So automation solution architect have to adapt and change their designs in order to uh, meet the new requirements. So what we mean by the different uh, changes in the business requirements is like uh, earlier, maybe the process which you have understood involves reading data from Excel file and face the data directly uh, from Excel file itself. But later on, the process owners can come up with a requirement that you have to read the data from a third-party application, let's say a Salesforce or SAP. So you have to adapt your design accordingly in order to accommodate all these changes. And also these changes on the existing automation solution and refine the automation solution as much as possible so that it is configurable in order to meet all those changing business requirements. So there's another aspect, which is the change requir requirement uh, or the change request phase, which we are going to discuss in the later decks. But this is re uh, during the requirement gathering when you are going to encounter changing business requirements, you have to adapt your design of the solution accordingly. Uh, next, uh, lack of technical expertise among the different stakeholders. So automation solution architect also might have to pitch in at different stages of the automation lifecycle to explain the functioning of the different UiPath tools and technologies, and also might have to provide some kind of training or support as and when required. Now, uh, you might also encounter a resistance to change by the business process owners to adopt the new tools or technologies that you are suggesting as part of your automation lifecycle. 
during this, that phase, you have to, there are some basic guidelines that we usually recommend, like you have to understand the reasons behind their resistance and address their concerns. The basic approach you should follow is you have to demonstrate the value that they are going to get by implementing those kind of UI path tools or technologies. Let's say for an example, you are going to Im include uh, UI path action center as part of your automation lifecycle, uh, which involves document understanding framework. So you have to demonstrate the value that they are going to get by implementing that action center in the loop or human in the loop. So this actually uh, Im improves the ML model by uh, getting the data, validated data from the human users. So this kind of value you have to provide or demonstrate to the stakeholders. And also you should involve the stakeholders during the design phase. And you always need to communicate on a regular basis during the design and whatever development progress you are making so that whatever changes you are incorporating in your design document, you are perfectly aligned with the stakeholders. And again, uh, lack of standardization of the business processes. Many a times we as solution architect face, uh, the business processes are not streamlined or standardized. So let's say for an example, you are automating a process where you need to match the invoices uh, in accordance with the purchase orders. So many a times the business process users are the as is process, as part of the as is process, they reach out to the procurement team in case some PO is missing or incomplete information is mentioned in the PO. So you mean you need to in, in involve human in the loop logic in order to incorporate these kind of changes. So that means you have to standardize the business process uh, and adapt your design accordingly in order to uh, accommodate all these kind of uh, changes. Now, uh, next point is a very important point, like managing the stakeholder expectation, uh, which can be unrealistic at times. Let's say for an example, you are implementing uh, invoice data extraction process, which involves over 30 plus vendors. Uh, you always need to align the client. So always you need to go in a phased wise approach, right? So let's say for an example, you implement the uh, document understanding phase for the first 10 vendors under phase one and phase two and so on. So that way gradually you have to implement the automation solution and uh, the stakeholder expectation can be, you have to implement the uh, automation for all the 50 vendors at one go, right? Which is not realistic at times. So you have to convince the stakeholder, you have to understand their expectations and you have to document all these expectations and clearly define during the kickoff meeting. And uh, after that, during the gradual weekly project meetings also, you have to touch up upon those points to uh, ensure that all the stakeholders and all the uh, expectations are aligned along with the implementation team. Uh, again, uh, defining the metrics and the KPIs to measure the success of the automation solution is another major challenge. Like uh, you have to uh, accurately define what kind of metrics you are going to follow for the success of the automation. And you have to define the use cases that you are going to automate. So many a times we face challenge like limited data availability when we are automating an invoice data extraction process. So most, most of the times we face scenarios like invoices gets archived on a monthly or twice a month basis. So that times it becomes very challenging for the client to provide us the sample invoices for implementing the same. So usual approach should be unless and until you get all the sufficient data or sufficient invoices samples for training your new ML model, you should not start the development phase, right? Uh, again, now jumping into the documentation phase. So these are the basic challenges that we usually face like uh, document accuracy. Uh, each and every changes that you are going to implement in the development phase or during the UAT phase as well, uh, whatever design changes you are making all should be documented in the SDD document itself. And SDD document is an ongoing document as you all know. So any kind of minor change also needs to be documented in the SDD. And uh, this kind of maintaining this document versions becomes a challenge many a times. So what we do uh, as part of one particular engagement is that uh, the client asked us to uh, prepare a kind of consolidated document or a PSDT. We termed it as PSDT, combining both the PDD and the SDT document and as well as the every test cases into a single maintainable document, which covers all the different aspects. So the process owners need to go through one single document in order to understand the process. So it becomes challenging when 
you are going to implement multiple number of processes and complex processes that time managing those document versions becomes a challenging for us and also the document approval processes like for each of the documents be it pdd or be it uat tracker all those documents need to be approved by the business so getting the approval from the business becomes a bit challenging many a times the challenges occurs due to stakeholders having different expectations on the automation project for that as we had suggested that we should con conduct weekly project meetings and we should define the expectations whatever uh, we need to clearly define those expectations during the kickoff meeting itself and uh, going through those scope of the document uh, on a weekly basis and touch up on the stakeholders to understand all the scope are clearly aligned along with the implementation team so this is again uh, these are the specific challenges that we usually face in the documentation phase uh, coming to the access phase and the development phase, uh, it becomes challenging for the automation solution architect to identify the different access requirements, like each of the applications or the systems involved uh, involves different roles and permissions for each of the users, be it uh, developer, be it process users, be it robot users, you have to segregate the different roles and permissions for each of the accesses and uh, managing those accesses becomes challenging for us. So automation solution architect need to ensure that all the accesses are clearly defined in the application access tracker and need to be maintained uh, and need to be tracked during the uh, requirement gathering phase and need to be followed upon uh, also with the other teams who are going to provide us with the relevant accesses. And uh, lastly, during the access phase, addressing infrastructure requirements is another major challenge. Like you have to take into account uh, firewalls or VPNs uh, while designing the entire solution diagram flow. You need to take into account the network architecture and also your design solution should be scalable enough to accommodate the future growth and increased demand. So as we were talking earlier, your automation solution should be configurable as much as possible. So let's say for an example, you need, just need to involve a new vendor into scope or a new bank statement from uh, a new bank, uh, which is not defined in the automation scope. Those changes should require minimal changes in the automation solution. Uh, and your solution should be scalable as much as possible. Also, you need to take into account the cost of infrastructure as well while designing the automation solution, uh, like be it robot license, be it application accesses that are involved. You need to take into account purchasing those licenses so, so that before the development, all the accesses are in place. Now, during the development phase, uh, these are the basic challenges or these are the basic roles and responsibilities of automation solution architect that you have to ensure consistency in the naming standards or the coding standards that all the developers should follow the same standards to ensure the consistency in the code base. Uh, you have to standardize the automation where and wherever possible, like inserting of log messages, proper annotations, naming conventions, and as well as error handling, all should be taken into account into your standardization framework. Uh, you have to out, out, outline all the technical specifications and the requirements in the solution design document. Many a times, uh, the automation as a automation solution architect, we uh, tend to miss out the detailed requirements that are required, like be it assets or be it any kind of accesses or be it any kind of exception handling, all should be clearly defined in the SDT document. And uh, also you have to identify opportunities for reuse, like uh, you, you know about UiPath Marketplace. So before the starting of the development, you need to ensure or you need to check the automation marketplace or UiPath marketplace uh, for opportunities for reuse, uh, whether you can reuse any components as part of that automation use case. So you need to identify those components beforehand and uh, make your sol automation solution as much reusable as much possible, right? Uh, again, ensuring version control. All the developers need to ensure that they are daily committing their code changes and as an automation solution you architect, you might have to pitch in and resolve the conflicts in the commits that uh, whenever multiple developers are working on the same source code repo, right? Uh, these are the major challenges. And uh, also you have to address the integration challenges and you have to conduct the code reviews on a periodic basis. And before deployment also you have to uh, 
ensure that load testing should be performed to identify any kind of performance bottlenecks. And uh, you have to identify the areas of workflow that might cause those performance issues and you might have to pitch in over there and come up with an efficient solution for the same. So these are some of the challenges during the development phase. Now coming to the testing phase, one of the major challenge during the testing phase is managing the test data or getting the test data from the uh, stakeholders. So for that, uh, Majorly, uh, what we do is we get a clone of the production environment and deploy it into the UAT or the testing environment or the development environment. And many a times it becomes challenging when those kind of data is not available or due to some compliance issues, uh, the client refuses to uh, migrate those kind of data. And in those cases, you have to you might have to come up with some kind some kind of uh, dummy data in, into the testing environment. And you just need to ensure that all the test data that are relevant for uh, performing the UAT or performing your test case scenarios should be incorporated into your QA environment or the dev environment. Uh, now for this, you have to coordinate with the multiple teams. You have to manage the test environments as well. And you might also have to address the issues identified during the testing and the UAT phase. And you have to fix those issues along with the developer on a promptly manner and effectively. Uh, this becomes challenge at times and you need to ensure that whatever issues are coming up during the UAT phase are clearly or uh, promptly fixed into the testing environment and then it should be pushed into the uh, production environment. Now, finally, getting a sign off on the UAT is another aspect where uh, it becomes difficult to uh, get approval by the business stakeholders on the UAT test cases. So for that, we usually recommend that you schedule a recurring meeting and perform the UAT in front of the business stakeholders uh, and get the sign off on the meeting itself and ask them the relevant emails from the business stakeholders so that uh, you are aligned with whatever expectations or whatever test cases you have covered along with the business stakeholders. And uh, finally, during the deployment phase, uh, there can be minor hiccups like technical issues may arise where solution architect might have to pitch in. And most importantly, automation solution architect need to prepare a deployment plan. Uh, considering all the aspects like data security, bot setup, configurations, one-time configurations, and also, uh, recovery plan, disaster recovery plan should also be in place uh, in case the bot fails in the production environment. So a deployment plan is very mandatory for before going in for production deployment. Uh, RPA solution architect also need to ensure that infrastructure supporting the UiPath project is adequate and handle the expected workload for that load testing should be performed before pushing it that into uh, deployment. Uh, also, you have to manage the cost associated with the UiPath project, like you have to allocate the load onto different robot licenses, whatever robots you have available, you need to calculate the licenses on top of it and need to manage the cost effectively. Uh, finally, during the delivery or the handover phase, uh, you need to ensure that whatever automation solution it, you design, uh, that is as per their expectation. So user acceptance is very much important. Like let's say for an example, you are incorporating Action Center or UiPath apps, or be it any other UiPath tools and technologies, the user should be uh, acquainted with the UiPath tools or products during the delivery or the handover phase. Uh, you need to ensure that, and you need to ensure a KT session should be arranged for that, to, for giving that handover and explain them the functioning of UiPath Action Center so that they are accustomed with that particular automation process. Uh, secondly, training and support should be provided and also handover should be provided to the support teams and post delivery also, automation solution architect need to evaluate the success of the automation project. And also you have to identify areas uh, for improvement. Like let's say for an example, your automation is taking too much time on performing some set of transactions, you might have to identify where you can improve on those specific aspects. And uh, you need to uh, work proactively and uh, post delivery, you need to evaluate those kind of aspects as well. Uh, finally, during the change request phase, uh, these are the major challenges that we face like scope creep, which is the major reason why we come up with a change request phase. 
uh, and automation solution architect need to ensure that uh, whatever scopes uh, that are coming up during the change request phase or whatever additional scopes which are which were not defined earlier during the project kickoff phase uh, you need to document all those scopes and all those uh, expectations need to be clearly aligned with the business stakeholders and uh, you need to perform impact analysis on the same uh, that whether those kind of changes are feasible enough uh, and you might also have to perform some kind of poc or demo for the same if you are not uh, sure about the feasibility of that particular change implementation uh, and additional effort on the license requirement also need to be calculated accordingly for implementing those changes and uh, Finally, alignment of those change request with the process owners should also uh, be performed. Like uh, whatever, whoever business stakeholders are involved, you need to uh, communicate the same, communicate the all the scope or the agenda of that particular automations. You need to clearly document those and get it aligned with the stakeholders. Uh, finally, during the support and maintenance phase, uh, this is majorly performed by the developer, but still automation solution architect need to pitch in at times and uh, perform the root cause analysis along with the developer to ensure all the changes or all the fixes are in place uh, during the maintenance phase. Uh, and you also need to have to pitch in and perform continuous improvement analysis on the same. Uh, after incorporating each of the changes, you need to ensure that the developer performs regression testing so that it does not hamper any of the existing change that are already uh, being performed or the scope of the automation. So uh, you also need to communicate the issue of the resolution to the stakeholders after each of the bug fixes. And it will also always be better if you can document those bug fixes along with the resolutions. Uh, in some kind of document or knowledge-based articles for future reference. And finally, publishing the updated code into production uh, should also be in place. Like whatever uh, latest code that you are going to deploy into production, developers should push that latest code into the production uh, GitHub or the version control system. Now, uh, after we complete all these automation lifecycle stages, we have identified what are the common challenges and here we are going to discuss about how you can address them. So first of all, high client expectations is one of the major challenge that we usually encounter during any kind of uh, stages in the automation lifecycle, right? So for that, we usually recommend that uh, whatever scope or whatever expectations that you are going to have uh, with the process regarding the process along with the stakeholders, you should document that into the project kickoff template itself. And during the project kickoff itself, you get a sign off uh, during the scope of the automation. And it is very important to have regular project status meetings to ensure that you are aligned uh, with the customer and the implementation team regarding all the changes that you are going to perform. So any of the changes, that, new changes that you encounter during uh, each of those phases, you should uh, clearly uh, call it out as a change request and need to be handled as a change request process, process separately. Uh, so this is regarding high client expectations. And secondly, uh, another major challenge that we encounter is the scope creep. So a statement of work or the SOW that we call out uh, should be signed off in the beginning of the project to confirm whatever changes uh, that we are going to perform as part of the automation. And any factors that we are going to uh, encounter, which is not documented in those kind of documents should be discussed during the weekly project meetings and clearly called out and uh, change request phase should be performed for each of those changes. Uh, next uh, challenge that we usually face is the unorganized UAT. Uh, so for that, we need to have clear responsibilities for the user acceptance testing. Uh, this needs to be communicated during early in the engagement, during the kickoff stage only. Uh, that is, solution architect should explain to the stakeholders that uh, during the UAT phase, what all kind of efforts needs uh, are required from the business side, and uh, also determine the number of hours that will be required from the client side and uh, clearly get a, a approval on that same. Uh, so during the process analysis phase also, it is very important to determine the success criteria and create the UAT plan uh, accordingly uh, to cover all the aspects uh, that we are going to uh, define in the automation scope. 
uh, as part of the automation solution architect, you also need to validate the feasibility of each of the testing scenarios and each of the uh, success criteria that you are defining during the uh, initial requirement gathering phase. Finally, the, during the access uh, phase, uh, we also encounter access delays from the client. So uh, the first, there can be two documents you can maintain. One is the issue tracker where you can maintain the list of all the issues that you are going to uh, encounter during the entire automation journey. And uh, during these weekly project meetings, you need to discuss all those issues and uh, clearly mark the status of each of those issues as whether these are, those are resolved or not. And uh, secondly, you can take help of application tracker, which is a template you can prepare from your site, uh, which will list down all the applications that will be required along with the user roles, along with the different process owners as well, and along with the uh, robot service accounts as well. So whatever application accesses are you are going to require as part of the automation uh, journey, you need to document all those in the application tracker and track them on a regular basis to get the uh, application access uh, on time that is before the starting the development phase. And uh, finally, uh, the major challenge is uh, stakeholder availability. Again, many a times we encounter scenarios where uh, stakeholders are not available or uh, during the UAT phase or during the process understanding phase. So it is very important to decide on the uh, number of hours or the number of subject matter experts you are going to require per stage, like let's say for an example, for UAT phase, how many number of SMEs are going to be required for the UAT phase and uh, get it aligned during the requirement gathering phase, uh, all, all also in the kickoff stage to get it aligned with the business owners that this many number of hours we are going to require. And uh, so that there is, there is no conflict in the meetings for the different uh, subject matter experts. And uh, also you have to estimate the number of hours for the same and communicate the same beforehand with the particular stakeholder. Now, these were some of the common uh, challenges that we usually face. Now coming to the lessons learned and some of the basic guidelines that we are recommending uh, for the automation solution architect. Uh, so a basic, while designing the automation solution archi uh, architecture diagram, you should always follow a dispatcher and performer architecture, meaning uh, whatever data is required for your automation flow, you should use a dispatcher flow, which will be pushing the items into the orchestrated queue and a separate performer logic should be there, which will be looping through each of the transaction items and performing the operations. And always you should go by the, uh, you, you should design separate sub processes for each of the uh, tasks relevant for each of the applications. So that will allow you to usually scale up or scale down the process. So if uh, going ahead, if you require any particular change for any particular application, you just need to update one particular XAML or one particular reusable component, and that will fix the entire workflow issue rather than you don't need to open the all the workflow and fix the code over there. Uh, secondly, uh, feasibility analysis or POC should be performed always for the complex business processes. Like let's say for an example, you are going to implement a document understanding framework for one of your process, which involves invoice data extraction. So before going in for the automation of such kind of use cases, it is always recommended to perform a feasibility analysis and a POC for the same, uh, meaning that you can consider a subset of the vendors into your automation journey and uh, design a proof of concept, uh, concept for the same, that will allow you to assess the model performance, that will allow you to create a baseline model for the same, and also you will be able to demonstrate the model performance to the relevant stakeholders. And it will also help you to minimize the risk of project failure or any kind of delays that you might encounter. Uh, again, uh, for processes involving high volume of transactions, it is always better to have multi-bot architecture. Uh, which will allow you to process the transactions simultaneously. Uh, reusability concept, uh, again, we discussed about the UiPath marketplace or the solution ac accelerator as we call it. Uh, you need to uh, check the availability of any kind of marketplace components if there are any uh, readily available before starting of this development. Uh, also as part of your own project or as part of your own client, you should always build as much reusable components pertaining to your applications or whatever automation you're performing. So that way it will always allow you to reuse a 
component which you had built earlier. And that will minimize the time and effort that is required to develop an automation solution. Again, for effort estimation, which is a major role for automation solution architect, it is always recommended to include an additional buffer of 20 to 30% to account for any kind of unforeseen issues or delays. Uh, and your effort should always include business analysis, development, testing, UAT, go live, and hyper care period as well, uh, while you share the timelines with the relevant stakeholders. And always break down the complex processes into smaller sub processes for effort estimation. Uh, that will allow you to uh, kind of uh, estimate the effort on a granular basis. And that will allow you to uh, accurately estimate the number of hours that will be required pertaining to each of the applications. So let's say for an example, you are building a reusable component or using a reusable component, which was already pre-built for one particular application. You can just pull out the effort required uh, only to plug and play for that particular component. And uh, there are specific guidelines as well. We are recommending as part of the access request. So it is always recommended that accesses should not be tied to individual email addresses of the developers. Rather, you can create separate bot service development accounts or production accounts. Uh, email addresses should be used. Uh, examples have been given for the same. So service accounts usually look for look like uh, similar like uh, svc.devrobot at the redcompany.com or something similar. Uh, this ensures that all the accesses that you are going to raise can be managed centrally. And uh, by not tying to any particular individual developers, you are ensuring that if going ahead, any developers may leave the project or may leave the organization, uh, you would not compromise on the access. So any new developers don't need to raise accesses for uh, any kind of applications. Now, uh, lastly, production deployment plan should be in place before you deploy any kind of automation solution. Uh, so it should include all the aspects like step-by-step -step deployment plan. It should include any kind of adjusting the screen resolutions, if any, of the production VDI. Any, any kind of one-time settings or configurational changes also need to be documented. Uh, you should check all the accesses for robot service accounts uh, should be in place before deploying uh, into production environment. And also most importantly, uh, disaster recovery or rollback plan should be in place in case the deployment uh, fails in the production environment. So these are the major aspects that you should include in your production deployment plan. Uh, lastly, migration of assets. So the developer might have to migrate a multiple number of assets or packages from different environments like dev to QA or QA to prod. So instead of manually creating all those assets, we usually recommend using UiPath Orchestrator Manager tool, uh, which is a tool offered by UiPath Marketplace and which allows you to migrate all the assets and configurations from uh, one tenant to another uh, easily without uh, minimizing or mi minimizing the errors required, uh, which might be required while you create those assets manually, right? And it also streamlines the migration process as it allows you to bulk upload all the assets from an Excel file where you can list down all the assets that will be required. Uh, and using this tool, you can migrate those assets from one particular tenant to another. So this brings us to the end of the uh, session of these uh, challenges or lessons learned. We talked about multiple challenges of automation solution architect and how you can resolve the same. Uh, now we will be quickly jumping on into the uh, quiz session. So uh, I would uh, suggest everyone to go to menti.com and uh, type this code 7535. No, no. We are sorry, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, hi, hi, Nikhil, you can take it off from here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. But uh, before we go into jump into the quiz session, so I would like to uh, Thank uh, Vyajoti for giving the wonderful light. He covered almost all. You can go to the another slide. I think you have these slides, right? The team slide and all. Yeah, you can. So, so first of all, so thank you so much for giving the wonderful insights, especially on the challenges part, how solution architect will be playing a major roles in different phases of automation and how the challenges and yeah it's it's a diff it's a fantastic session and fantastic deck you have prepared guys like it's really appreciated so i would like to thank divya once again and coming back to the team like yeah divya you want to tell 
yeah i would like to thank uh, everyone in the uh, call who has joined the session and most th importantly thanks to nikhilis uh, who has organized this entire uh, automation solution architect series uh, it requires a lot of effort i understand in coordinating with all of the speakers, but he has done a wonderful job. And most importantly, also, I would like to thank Vijay Sekhar, who is the moderator of this particular session uh, in engaging with the uh, entire audience, right? Thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining. Yes, so like there are a few questions if you can take. So it is in chat. I think somebody's shared with me directly. So let me read the question. So is there any time frame for each phase discussed? Like for six months project time, what is the time allocation for each phase? So yeah, he's, he's asking, for example, it is a requirement phrase. How much time it will take for requirement and how much time development and all he's asking. Right. So it depends upon uh, case to case, right? Uh, so first of all, you need to understand the complexity of the business process and uh, you need to uh, estimate all these timelines alongside with the business analyst because business analyst is the one person who is involved in the process walkthrough sessions and uh, also uh, understand the business. Uh, so first of all, you have to understand the complexity of the business processes and uh, and how much time uh, we usually perform the business analysis phase is uh, depends upon case to case basis. But again, one week or two week time is sufficient for going through any particular uh, business process that we have seen in the past use cases. Yeah, thanks for that. Uh, so next we have one more day. There are available some doctors. There are some, some document guidelines on AUN and framework to help you with your calculation. So, is there are any documentation guidelines or even a framework to help you calculate the RPA, ROI, ROI? Uh, there is no such uh, framework as such uh, that is readily available as open source. But uh, again, it depends upon the client to client different clients use different ROI template, but uh, for calculating all this ROI for RPA solutions, it is usually best practice is to go by uh, implementation of Automation Hub because Automation Hub is one particular uh, uh, tool offered by UiPath where the business process owners can first raise an idea and from idea till implementation part, you can track all those aspects and it can also allow you to, there are, so there are a basic set of uh, uh, questionnaire that you need to answer in that uh, particular uh, while submitting your idea, right? So that will allow you to calculate the ROI of any particular RPA process. So uh, as such, there's no separate uh, template for that, but using Automation Hub, you can use the Automation Hub uh, one particular feature where you can use it to calculate the ROI of a RPA solution based upon the questions that the business process answers on the set of questions. Yeah, thank you. Again, like, uh, uh, do we have, sorry, can you share the list of the, Yeah, the documents, like uh, somebody is asking documents. So I will try to figure out and I will try to upload some of the templates I have and speakers have and we'll try to upload in the, some, some of the series or in from my channel, okay? Do we have any metrics to give the development effort estimate based on uh, different complexity levels or no applications or any other? Yeah, so the, he's asking like, uh, how do we give the estimates for the development? Yeah, so uh, it again depends upon complexity of the use case. So we define the uh, complexity of any kind of automation solution as uh, simple, medium and complex, right? So those are the basic uh, metrics that we usually follow. And each of those uh, metrics has different set of parameters like number of applications involved or if there are any kind of uh, document extraction required for that uh, purpose. So then the complexity uh, increases, right? So if there are any, any kind of uh, extraction of documents are involved in that particular process, then that will be a higher complexity process. Again, uh, going to the, uh, let's say for an example, you are automating some kind of VDI, that will be again a high complexity process. And all these complexity parameters will be taken into account and uh, we share the effort estimate accordingly. Yeah, thanks for that. I think uh, we are good with the questions. So guys, like I would like to request, uh, before we go into the Mentimeter, I would like to request uh, you to say, uh, share your videos. I mean, you can on your camera, like speakers and the moderators as well. 
so yeah be, be, if between people on the cameras so let me all, also on my my camera so from my end so so first of all i would like to thank uh, ui path community and the hyderabad community for organizing this series and uh, support and you guys given a wonderful support for this series six days and six sessions and six speakers six seven speakers and seven moderators it's not a joke and seven days six days session is not a joke really appreciated and i would like to sub, uh, thank bots infinite solutions for entire uh, series sponsoring the event and supporting the event really appreciated from bottom of our heart so thank you so much for the all the goodies that you are providing for this series thank you so much and uh, bot infinite quick intro about bot infinite is like bot infinite is one of the uh, leading digital transformation company from hyderabad so please do follow them in the linkedin and please do follow them for their uh, upcoming events or upcoming updates from their company yeah, that's from my side and like i have given you the permission so if you can on your camera and i think okay people are there so okay yeah thanks so i see lot lot of good people everybody every day people are joining so i think some of the moderators are also joined so moderators if you uh, vijay if you can see any of our moderator just give their uh, give them a uh, co-host co co so i see raju is there so just give the raju and if anybody else just give them co-host okay you cannot give up okay i will give uh, so guys like uh, even i will try to give you the uh, this one unmute option for few people who are joining regularly so i think some people are joining from office as well so thanks for that sunil sir so thank you so much for joining again urmila sunil riya so yeah, continuously joining this sessions so really appreciated so i given some of uh, the unmute option to talk before we go because if i see if i started quiz again people will jump into that mind and you will immediately drop off so uh, anybody want to talk about the series or anybody wanted to talk about any particular speaker or moderator you can talk for one minute and we'll jump immediately we'll jump into the uh, session so before somebody is talking just stay there photos please please stay on your video i will take some photo or vijay you can you also take and uh, yeah anybody want to talk you please talk not the moderators but any any other people want to talk and about this series how you liked it so how you enjoyed this series so did you got the option yes yes you got the option brothers actually anything anything uh, however you are comfortable you can talk i am i am happy to listen and have, our speakers and moderators are also happy to listen you people okay <laughs> if not uh, fine uh, i am fine like did you got the speak me unmute option also right yes yes you got the option so i think i would like to, go, to speak uh, yeah urmila here yeah hi urmila so yeah uh, thank you for arranging this uh, this uh, actually this kind of session so uh, we are trying like there are a couple of courses in the i think ui path is also provided in their academy uh, but it's like uh, we are not able to do it, uh, it by ourselves it's like uh, it causing an issue for a daily basis like we are busy with some work or anything so this is kind of a platform where we actually got the knowledge and um, we can reuse whatever the whatever the uh, the things that has been shared so it was really wonderful session that has been delivered and we are trying and we are attending from the uh, day one and it was really useful for us in a daily uh, life so thank you nikhilesh and the team uh, for arranging this kind of session so yeah thank you yeah thank you thank you so much urmila for joining and i uh, really appreciated you join almost all sessions i believe so yeah riya you want to talk you are telling something okay somebody is messaging thank you team making such a useful session as i said like uh, uh, videos are already available in the youtube channel so nikhil is at your busy youtube channel you just browse there so all five sessions already uploaded after this session by tomorrow definitely i will try to upload and uh, hearty congratulations for the all the quiz winners who are participated from last five sessions and all the best for today's winner so as uh, 
Now the we are shared the screen, so it's uh, something seven five double. So we'll jump into the quiz. I think if you are uh, comfortable, then yeah, we'll go to the quiz session. So all the best. You can, I mean, you can try to off your cameras and we'll concentrate on quiz now. Yes. So so oh, 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 oh. yeah and one more request is like people yes you you i know everybody is not familiar thank you nikhilesh and all the mentors say rajan thank you so i, I everybody is not familiar writing a linkedin post and all but write no problem just just write or two three for example today is a session yeah so i have learned these things from divya jyoti so thank you so much for arranging the session two, two to three lines is also fine so which gives motivation for us and which gives motivation to speakers moderators to bring more and more such series as i am planning to do one more interesting series very soon so that is the reason i request the people to do okay thank you and uh, so let me uh, quickly Uh, give the quiz uh, link. So quiz link is mentimeter dot com, and uh, Vijay type it seventy five thirty five. I mean seven five three five. Ah, uh, mentimeter code is seven five three five zero five eight seven. Yeah, so it's seven five three five zero five eight seven. It's the code. I think uh, Vijay typed in the chat. So uh, just log into mentimeter dot com. So. Okay, I will give you the link also. It's very easy. Just uh, uh, Menti site. We'll see the final uh, winners for today. And even the good news, like what Sinfinet already shared the goodies with me. So it's with me now. So I already received the goodies from Bot Sinfinet company. So thank you, Bot Sinfinet, for quickly sending the goodies. So I just want to a uh, courier from them for the people. I think okay, we are good. So let me share my screen. I am going to my uh, Menti site. So hope uh, uh, everybody is joining Menti, and we'll see the final winners. Yeah, I think I am seeing a good number. Let me share my screen. so if you want to i mean if i want to wait for last 30 more seconds i can wait so yeah some good number of people are there try to try to get this uh, done for this session at least we have less number of players so okay uh, all the best so 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 i, I, I repeat again 7535 0587 is this uh, code okay if you are visible here Okay, done. All the best, and let's on the first question on the screen, please. You you can use your mobile screen or laptop. What should be included in automation production deployment plan? So the way is explained this. So answer should be. so most of you has given the correct answer all of them were including role block plan thank you so much next question how oh, sorry later board okay uh, anita and urmila is there so congratulations stay stay tuned you will be again so next question sorry sorry i'm really sorry brothers let me stop Sorry, if something went different, wait, wait, wait. Okay, sorry guys. Let I am sharing my screen again. You stay there only. Really sorry. Hope my screen is. Okay, 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 okay. Sorry, sorry. There is a glitch from my end. Again, again, I am sharing. Hope, hope you are able to see. Okay, the so, okay, okay, okay. So again, I am coming from first question. So stay. How can you address high client expectation? So there are four options. Uh, 
Okay, we'll see the answer. Okay, using regular meetings at project kickoff template. That is the question answer. Next, we see the letter board. So Ashok Karle and Mustak Ahmed. So, so we'll see for the second question. So second question on screen, how to address the changes of scope of a project? Again, there are four options. Uh, these questions are big, so I given more time to give the answer also. Yeah, I added more time. So how to address the change scope of the project? Okay, so it's uh, it's the follow the change request process. So it is talking about how to change. So it's about follow the change. Okay, later board. So later board is wait, 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 wait. So later board is Jay and Sagar Khan. So her congratulations. And next question. Next question on screen again. What is the purpose of having regular project status meetings? I think this question given it earlier, but try to do again. So what is the purpose of having regular project status meetings with customers? Okay, so most of you given correct alignment between stakeholder and implementation team. team. Yes, let about again. <clears throat> okay, so again, J and Devender. So J and Devender is coming first. So final question, I, I, I am going. Stay tuned. Okay. I see the final letter board. So I see uh, Devender. So Devender, hearty congratulations. And uh, Mr. Durgesh, uh, hearty congratulations, Durgesh. So because this question already given in the first time, so that, is, that also it is calculated. So it is Durgesh and Devender. So Durgesh and Devender, please drop me an email, nickel.rp at the gmail.com. Reject and please type. So nickel.rpa. Uh, stay tuned, guys. Like I will show you something. Okay, okay. I think yes, nickel.rp at the gmail. Mr. Devender and Durgesh, I guess. So hearty congratulations, both of you brothers. So if you should see this is Devender and Durgesh. So thank you so much. So Arjit, congratulations both of you. Please, please draw. Please do send uh, uh, your uh, yeah uh, your uh, details to my email address. So yeah. So I would like to uh, uh, talk. Uh, I would like to. I actually you have the unmute option. You have the video option. You have the all the options actually. So please try to talk if you are able to talk. And yeah. I would like to thank you to uh, Vijay to talk for one minute. So, yeah, thanks, Niklesh. Uh, uh, thanks, everyone, for joining the uh, wonderful sessions. Actually, uh, I hope people are enjoying these sessions. I know most of the most of them are like uh, you know uh, most experienced in the RPA uh, industry. So myself, uh, uh, Vijay Shekhar Upadhyayla. So I'm a tech lead in uh, Value Momentum. I have almost nine years of experience, uh, uh, IT experience. I'm into RPA almost uh, eight, year, eight years. I worked with the different tools like, uh, you know, starts with the Blue Prism and Power Automate and then UA Path. my primary, you know, focus on UA Path, of course. Uh, I managed uh, uh, many, many clients and, uh, you know, uh, diverse in like uh, uh, the domains, healthcare, banking and uh, uh, different sectors, actually manufacturing sectors. So this is myself and uh, 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 thanks. Thanks everyone for, uh, you know, uh, growing uh, in, a, in a community way. And thanks Niklesh uh, for arranging these wonderful sessions. And, yeah.
that's it yeah, thank you thank you so much vijay for your contribution yeah. so i completely understand so you on your uh, uh, team like on your weekdays you have successfully uh, joined each and every session and successfully made it possible so uh, really appreciated so any anybody else like uh, moderators anybody there raju or anybody want to thank a final note then we can yani klesh yes yeah uh, first of all uh, you know i would like to congratulate uh, divya jyoti uh, it was very wonderful session and uh, you know uh, and special thanks to ui path boats infinite and uh, you know double special thanks to niklesh so because without you i don't think uh, this sa series uh, you know this much uh, you know what i can say successful so how you promoted all the things we have seen like uh, through memes and then linkedin post and uh, we got huge response for that and uh, it uh, it it became full success because of you and our team effort and we are expecting more series and more uh, you know will 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 help the people throughout the automation more the people uh, and thank you very much entire team and nikhil uh, once again thank you thank you thank you so much uh, uh, niklesh just a second yes, apologies please. my from my side actually uh, the video i it's a wonderful session even even for me it is like uh, you know uh, <laughs> engaging and you know i just want to know uh, you know there are much more things to learn actually in this session uh, thanks again <laughs> yeah please go on nikhil yeah thank you vijay thank you it really means a lot so uh, and again i i would like to thank nikhilas for coming up uh, all these automation solution architect series uh, because we had never encountered this kind of sessions anywhere uh, be it youtube or be it any kind of community environments uh, events so uh, coming up with this kind of series is really helpful for uh, us like automation solution architect role and yeah i also got to learn a lot from other speakers as well and it was really insightful and a helpful session for me thank you nikhilesh thank you each and every moderators vijay thank you and uh, raju everyone yep so yes so thank you so much so uh, before i close so i just want to tell quick thing like see uh, when you are new to any community so we were already explained you right if you feel see this essay series was my dream from last one year because when i when for example we are from hyderabad community so when hyderabad community does anything that is the first it comes and we will do the first thing for example we have done the developer series we have done a business analyst series and today we are doing a solution architect series so so that is the reason just and i will tell one more thing we have good number of people so let me show you something then like for example it is very very easy like how you can join any sessions for many where in the world that i will show you for one minute and i will close so for example if you see my screen so this is the hyderabad page so hope my screen is visible so if this is hyderabad page everybody joined here and you then only you entered here just for example a website is completely same uh, community.uipath.com for example banga bangalore if you type just bangalore you will able to see the bangalore chapter and you just click on join and you will be able to see the all the meetups okay that is bangalore okay this is about bangalore same wise so for example for the burmila madam and for my brother so it is pune just go there just click on pune just it will be automatically there in upcoming we there is a, a virtual meetup in pune if you see that just view details okay Uh, simple, very simple. Just click on register. Uh, same you did. It is automatically populated. Then submit. Done. Pune event also. It's a virtual event. You join Pune event also. That's very simple, right? So like that, you can join each and every chapter. And final, final request. I see 
quite people are there uh, i final request is like please please do subscribe i never asked in the entire series because it's not the right way i thought like, i will ask after some time like after the series completion so please do subscribe to my channel so it is very simple nikhilesh satyavarupu uh, if you click on it, it will be there so please subscribe to my channel and i have i will show you what kind of videos i do really I, okay so for example entire developer series we are new to come if you new to community for new to rpa entire developer series we have created last year in was a fantastic 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 session 21 days we have done and it was super duper hit so please do check out in these videos and if you want to become a business analyst so there is a videos about the business analyst also pre sales there is a video estimation there are video documentation who are asking documents do check out this video complete documentation has been explained roi somebody is asking roi so how do you do roi entire roi video is here okay and you know scrum master agile so there is a session called scrum master and agile please do check about the scrum master here and somebody is asking deployments so uat uat deployment is here and i did many candid conversations with the industry experts please do check out sdd video super duper hit so sdd it is there pdd is also there it is also super duper video so pdd is also there and how what is how who is manager who is rpa manager and technical manager there is a video here and how the bpo industry is transforming into rpa there is a video here and what is the exceptions like we talk about exceptions i done a complete video on exception with an industry exception what is exception real time exception system exception business exceptions all these videos i have done here yeah like this there are many many videos uploaded here please do 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 subscribe to my channel then you will be notified and if you see there are five videos already uploaded in from our series sixth video definitely will upload soon so that's from my side and final request i see queue of people is there so final final request is like just just uh, drop a uh, linkedin post after your uh, done after your learnings i and post the uh, win, uh, tag about the speakers so today's speaker is divya jyoti sinha divya jyoti sinha is from ui path so if you type divya jyoti and he will come and today moderator is uh, vijay shekar so he is from uh, value momentum please uh support him and my name is nicholas sachar you all know very well and the other moderator we have is esu raju so please follow him and please do follow them uh yeah so he's esu raju so he esu is waving somewhere okay so that's all that's all really 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 thank you so much and yeah that's from my side anybody last last one minute i have like 30 seconds if anybody i you already have the video option you already have the unmute option you already have the everything i have given every option so if you want to talk somebody and close the session that will be really really helpful or else we are good then she is happy to connect and uh, always be learning new things from us and yeah we will also be learning from yours yeah okay uh, if if we are good uh, mr devender and mr uh, somebody durgesh at least you people can on the camera and tell something brothers devender and durgesh i think you got the uh, uh, quiz win winner for today right unmute also i given video also i given rename also i given somebody is speaking or durgesh brother uh, yeah, i think it was a wonderful session so i think thanks to you to arranging this kind of a session uh, or this kind of series i will say and thanks to all the speaker and moderator who has arranged this series and uh, we can say it's very much uh, helpful for all of us who is uh, very keen for the solution architect role yeah thanks for that thanks brother and hearty congratulations please please uh, before you go to your work just drop me an email or else okay. you will forget so yeah thanks mr uh, devender if you are if you are available okay thanks uh, if, if if we are good like uh, yeah, i am very really really excited and really happy so uh, firstly uh, first and foremost and final thanks to the vijayuti it's a wonderful session brother so really really appreciated for your time i know you are very busy in your schedule but you you took your time and given time to community again uh, speaking something on a very important topic so yeah that's all that's all from my end and thank you so much from the entire hyderabad community and for the speakers moderators everybody and thank you so much guys we'll meet you in the next session uh, soon and stay tuned for uh, hyderabad chapter you all know yoga.community.hyderabad thank you guys cheers bye bye thank you very much everyone jai hind